NCI day number 26, fourth grade reading. So you have a passage about amphibians. About amphibians. And there's a picture of a salamander there on top. Frogs, toads, salamanders, and newts are amphibians. The word amphibian means double life because these animals live part of their lives in water and part of their lives on land. An amphibian starts life in the water and then lives on land as an adult. Amphibians lay their eggs in the water. These eggs do not have a hard shell. They are more like jelly. Young amphibians that hatch from eggs look very different from adult amphibians. The young breathe with gills. They have tails that help them swim. As young amphibians grow, their bodies change. They grow legs, Lungs develop with and their gills disappear. These changes allow amphibians to live on land and breathe air with their lungs. The skin of an amphibian is not protected by hair, feathers, or scales like other animals. Their skin is permeable, which means they can absorb air and water through their skin. An amphibian found on all continents I'm sorry, amphibians are found on all continents except Antarctica. They are ancient animals that have been around for about 360 million years. However, their lives are being seriously threatened in today's world. And then here's a tree frog. Most amphibian species are frogs. This is a common tree frog. Alert! Scientists know approximately of 6,000 different kinds of amphibians but this number could change quickly. Scientists say that more than 120 amphibian species have already disappeared from the world. These kind of amphibians are extinct, meaning that all members of the species have died. Many different things are threatening the lives of amphibians, including habitat loss, pollution, introduced species, and a parasitic fungus. Scientists say that 2,000 to 3,000 of the amphibian species in the world are now threatened with extinction. It is the biggest extinction crisis in today's world. A newt. Most newts and salamanders are found in the cool forests of North America, Europe, and Northern Asia. Habitats and pollution. Amphibians often live in swamps and ponds, but many of these swamps and ponds are being filled to make way for roads, houses, and malls. Amphibians also live in rainforests that are being cut down or destroyed by fire. The loss of these habitats often leave the amphibians nowhere to live. Clean water is extremely important to amphibians. Adult amphibians need clean water to keep their skin moist. Adults lay their eggs in water, and young amphibians live completely in water. Some ponds and creeks are close to farms. Chemical fertilizers are used on farms to grow better crops. Pesticides are used to kill insects that destroy crops. However, when it rains, these chemicals are washed into, a nearby, into the nearby ponds and creeks that lead to swamps and rivers. Many frogs in these areas have been found with deformities, such as missing legs or extra legs. Deformed frogs like these have been found in 44 of the 50 United States. Some scientists believe that chemical pollution in the water is absorbed by the soft eggs of amphibians and by their permeable skin. The chemical pollution affects the eggs and growth of the young, causing these deformities. Okay, it says the blue poison dart frogs from are endangered and found only in the forest in South America. And this says the fire salamander lives in Hungary. Introduced species and fungus. Since the 1930s, African clawed frogs have been shipped around the world by thousands. These frogs are used in laboratory studies and for other purposes. Some exotic amphibians are shipped to other countries as pets or food. 
Sometimes these amphibians escape or are released into new habitat. In their new habitat, they can cause problems. The production of African clawed frogs into new areas has caused two major problems. African clawed frogs are more aggressive than many frogs, and they have been known to eat other frogs. But the bigger problem is that African clawed frogs carry a fungus called amphibian chytrid. This fungus does not hurt African clawed frogs, but it's deadly to many other kinds of amphibians. Scientists discovered this fungus in 1993. In the wild, the fungus is unstoppable and untreatable. It can kill 80% of the amphibians in an area within months. Scientists suspect that dozens of frog species have gone extinct because of this fungus. And this is a cane toad which lives in the Amazon jungle in Peru. Plans to help. Scientists and conservation groups from around the world are putting plans together to help save amphibians. Much of their work focuses on the amphibian kit rib fungus because the disease it causes is the most serious and immediate threat. Some scientists are researching how the disease spreads and why it kills only some individuals in one species, but kills all other species. Other scientists are assessing the damage in the disease has caused this area. The areas most affected so far include Central America, the Caribbean, Australia, and parts of Asia. However, scientists warn there is no continent or amphibian species that is safe. Conservation groups that include many zoos are taking in many of the threatened amphibian species to protect and preserve them. In the future, when the research scientists find ways to control the disease, the conservation groups will release these animals back into their natural habitat. habitat. What can we do? Like scientists, you can do research and learn as much as you can about the problems facing frogs and other amphibians. You can search the internet with using search words such as threats to frogs and amphibians for information. You can find maps and lists of the amphibian species in your area. Amphibians live all over North America and in every state in the United States. The Appalachian Range is home to many different species. Contact local nature preserves, zoos, or Office of Environmental Matters in your state to learn about volunteer opportunities. You can also help by keeping local ponds and creeks clean. Although these small habitats may not seem as important as others, they are home to many creatures. We need to help preserve a future for them as well. And it says a zookeeper cares for a frog, a, a corroboree frog, I guess that's how you pronounce that, at the right, and then he has some tadpoles over here that are developing. And that is all today for reading. There's no assignment, you just needed to listen to the story.